so we last time, um, you know, we we started through this, and um, well, we talked about this, we talked about that, we turned on the button power, yay, right? Um, and we want to keep our eye on this, right? What are we doing? You're going to look at an ad or ads um, and look at what it reveals about contemporary culture, values, society, whatever. And we're going to do it through looking at different appeals that advertisers use, looking at different techniques. So those are key things. Um, and we looked at it, and it's that same structure um, as we used in the... SA2, which is the basic argument structure, explain, analyze, argue, make your point. That is the structure that goes on. So love that and embrace it. Um, the only thing that's different here is we're describing the ad. And so we looked at the kids and talked about what kinds of things we could see, you know, and, and a little bit of what those implications are. We'll work more into that. We looked at the cops. I talked about how, you know, one, one, one approach you could take is just one ad and look at it and analyze it. Another one you can take is to take a theme, like here, stereotyping cops. <clears throat> you know, the cop that doesn't know their community, the cop that eats the donuts all the time, the cop that is just, you know, I mean, you know, just totally violent and doesn't see anything. What does that do? What's that saying overall? Um, and then we looked at the Jeep ad and all sorts of things going on there. And that's really about values because it's about, you know, valuing this country and those kind of things and definitely an appeal to patriotism. Um, so here we go. Let's just move on. I told you another video. Here we go. Where is it at? This was a, a Super Bowl commercial. So. This one. Okay, so 
so what's the basic story? The Pepsi. the Pepsi is the product. What is the story that you watched? Put that down. Gladiators. They're gladiators, and what are gladiators supposed to do? Like fight to the death, right? It's not just fight. It's to the death, right? And they come out and they're like, no, uh, -uh. they throw their weapons down. And they start singing because, you know, these gladiators happen to be Pink, Beyonce, and Britney Spears, right? <laughs> so this is what you would do. Okay. I would be, yeah, that's Beyonce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I, I keep trying to like Beyonce. I tell you what, I love all the single ladies, okay? I love that song. And then I listen to other stuff, and I'm like, this is way too mellow. I, maybe I haven't gotten through the playlist long, long enough, so I'm going to give it an effort. Um, but... So here they are, they're like, we're not going to fight. No. And they start singing, and the crowd's like singing with them too, right? And who's this other guy that we got here with the Pepsi? Isn't that the, like, head? The, the head dude, the Caesar, right? He'd be the Caesar in this case. And so this is Enrique Iglesias. I always want to say Julio Iglesias because my mom loved Julio Iglesias, and that totally dates me. But so there he is. He's the Caesar. He's the king. Right? And he's got this Pepsi. Does anybody else have Pepsi? No. This is the drink of the gods. Because kings, if you look at monarchies time after time after time, there's this association that these are special people that have this kind of blessing from God to rule. Um, so they are in place of the gods. And so all this happening, you know, they're singing. The people are going along with it. And all that sudden, that yeah, Pepsi just, you know, Caesar, he's like, I don't know what's going on. What's what's happening? This is not supposed to happen. You're supposed to kill each other for my pleasure so that I can watch this and be entertained. Um, so sing, 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 and looks at his advisors. They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Well, like, if you're like me, like, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. This was perfectly yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you. Let me teach you, okay? So we get, I love pink, though, I will say that. Um, so we get in there. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Miss key parts. So here we go. Everything's exciting, exciting. We're getting to, oh, dude, there goes the Pepsi. <gasps> what? Oh, and there's the king. And so our gladiators get to drink the Pepsi. What's happening here? What's the implication? The lion's going to eat him, right? And what do the gladiators do? They share the Pepsi with the people. This is a story as old as this country. This is a story of overthrowing the king. And the people get the stuff, right? The people get you. You want Pepsi? You can have Pepsi. It's not just for the king. And so this is a story about values, about, in fact, just very much political values where it stands. So we see that and makes sense, right? At the end, we're laughing. Pretty funny, right? Going to eat the king. Because... We come from a society where throwing the king out. When we kicked King George out and said, you know what? You can't rule us from all the way over there and tell us that you get all this stuff and we don't get a chance to get it too. It's a very, very, very democratic, very American story. So let's watch. Of course, we've got to watch something else, right? Got to have something to compare it to. Check this one out. Let's see. Let's make it big. Now you've got to watch for the differences.
Whoa, what? Does it disturb you a little bit, that ending? Whoa, should the, should the, the, our fine gladiators get eaten? No, no. <laughs> at, the very, at the very end, what do we get? He, here goes the Pepsi, right? Same story so far. Here goes the Pepsi. Different, different Caesar there. He pulls the lever. They don't share the drink with the people, do they? They get it for themselves. And then we get, you know, the Pepsi. And then smile of satisfaction. He's not eaten. What an asshole. That's what I thought, too. Man, first time I saw this, I saw these two together. I was at a pop culture convention. It's made for, this made for Middle East, right? Because these, these um, Super Bowl commercials, yeah, they cost like millions of dollars per spot, but that doesn't include production. That doesn't include pay, paying for Britney and Beyonce and Pink and all of the, whether it was CGI or having people, whatever. It doesn't pay for all of that. So when you hear numbers about how much it costs to have a Super Bowl commercial, that is just to buy the time. So, I mean, it's not just, you know, a couple million dollars. We're talking, man, 10, 5, 10, 15, you know, depending on the quality of the commercial. So they're not going to do that and not be able to use it somewhere else. And so this is remade for the Middle East. Now, the Middle East is monarchy. If you believe, if you're raised in a monarchy and the king does have divine okay, is it all right to throw? Think of it this way. If that was Jesus Christ off the, up there and they had thrown him off that seat... And then all of a sudden, the lion eats him. What would people have said? Oh, man, right? I mean, the outroar would have, because that's sacrilegious. Same thing. If you are a believer in a monarchy, then you are raised to see the king as part of the hand of God. So it is very sacrilegious to say that. Now, first time I saw it, and my favorite part is, you know, I don't know, I kind of scoot back that last one so I can watch you all react to that last moment. I watched this, um, I saw this first in a, a, a conference, a pop culture conference, and the guy that was showing it, he did it, and all of us in the room, the second one, we were just like, oh, that's so wrong, right? It was this sense of wrongness that the gladiators, they're the heroes. They're not supposed to get eaten. They're the ones that's overthrowing the king. They're sharing with the people. And in the second one, we don't see them sharing with the people. They get the Pepsi for themselves. And so what this is, this is, Two different value stories. One is valuing a democracy of the people, for, by the people, for the people. The other one is valuing the monarchy, the king, the queen, the Caesar, the whoever, as representative of God, of the one who is supposed to come out on top. And so each one of these, they're, diff they're the same, but that little twist, that little bit of something different changes the whole value structure of it. And that's what I think is amazing, is that it's those little subtle things, right? I mean, it changes the whole storyline, but not just the story, but our sense. If we were watching this in a country where it was a monarchy, I would have started off with the last one, and we'd have said, yeah, that's right. It's the way it should be. And we'd have watched the first one we watched and said, oh, no, no, there's something wrong about that. Right? And so it is about perspective. It is about the way we see things. And a lot of the way we see things, well, it does. It comes from the way we're raised, right? Our experiences, where, where we come from, the way our families are, our communities are, everything like that. That all makes a difference. And in this day and age, that media makes a difference too, whether it's TV or an ad on, you know, I mean, like a lot of times I've had in the past couple of years, students tell me, well, I don't watch TV, so I don't really see ads. You watch Facebook, you Instagram, you, I mean, you get these viral videos. Half of them are made by advertisers, right? I mean, they really are. And, and, and so we are watching it. We are surrounded by the media constantly. Um, and a lot of what it's doing, too, is it's telling us stories about who we are and how we should be. Wait, I feel like I'm quoting Lainey Lou. Oh, I am. Um, you know, one of the things she says that the, what these things do is they tell us 
Here's what we should want, what we should desire, what we should be like, what is acceptable and what isn't. And this is a great example of that what is acceptable and what isn't. Who should come out on top? Who should be victorious? Who should we praise and want to win and support? And who should we say, no, you don't get to be the winner? Over and over and over, and that's what advertising does. And again, I don't want to make you hate on it all. I, okay. We got Thorian on Netflix, and not like I haven't seen it before, but we're going to watch that this weekend, okay? I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for it all. Thor. Thor. We're on a kick of, you know, rewatching like all the um, cartoon movies, so <laughs> comic book movies. I'm sorry, not cartoon ones. So. You know, I mean, so it's out there, and it's, it's part of what we do for entertainment or enjoyment or whatever. Um, but at the same time, understanding that it is also playing a role in – how we see ourselves, how we see others, is very important for us to think about. How you balance that time, well, that's always a tricky thing. When I finish my English degree, which is all about analysis, this kind of shit, I mean, like, I analyzed, I was, I'm, my dad said, are you going to get a, your PhD, your doctorate? And I said, with all seriousness, Daddy, are you going to put a gun to my head? I mean, I was just like, I my head was just spinning so much. I just, I was like, I can't do this anymore. <sighs> no way. I did decide the other day, though, that um, if I get a doctorate, well, I used to think I would get a doctorate in, um, you know, creative thinking, and then I could be a doctor of imagination. Yeah, that was good, huh? <laughs> but I decided I'd need to change my last name so I could be Dr. Madness. That'd be great, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so the reason I really do like these is because they really do illustrate, one, definitely from our perspective, wherever you stand in terms of those values, in terms of those values of social, um, you know, like social structures and politics, it determines how we feel about each one of those. And so I think it's a really kind of powerful, powerful very serious, words, ah, words, ah, okay. Um, so, um, what we got to remember, and so we could look at that in a lot of different ways. You know, we could talk about the different structures and how those subtle things, like who gets the Pepsi and who doesn't. And when you look at the second one, the one with the Amir Diab, who's an Egyptian singer, the one that was made for the Middle East. And so, you know, they film the whole thing, and then they're just able to sub um, Enrique Iglesias, Amir Diab, whoever, right, in different places. So, um, yeah, he's a different, it's a different Caesar. And if you look real closely, you notice that he just, there are also different looks exchanged with him and his advisors. With the first one, the one for American consumption, it's kind of like, well, I don't know what's going on, right? And the other ones, they're like, well, I don't know what's going on, but they're very stern about it. There's just kind of a different feel to their reactions. Um, 